Televisions are labeled as refurbished once they have been sold at a major retailer, returned by the customer in less than 30 days, and sent back to the manufacturer to be inspected, tested, repackaged, and then resold. When TVs are received at the refurbishing facility, certified technicians and staff conduct a series of inspections to verify any performance issues. If defects are found, TVs are refurbished with replacement parts. These repairs can be as minor as replacing a faulty button or switch to completely gutting a product and replacing it with new parts to make it work better or more efficiently. A final inspection is performed on each TV in which comprehensive screen tests and quality control assessments are carried out to ensure the original defect has been corrected. TVs are then thoroughly cleaned, wrapped in plastic, and all accessories including the user manual and warranty card are repackaged within a refurbished branded box. From there, the units are shipped and made available for resale. Typically TVs are received worn, within damaged boxes, and in dirty condition. Units will be wrapped and palletized as per the shipping company or retailer. After the pallet is unwrapped, the RMA information should be checked and removed. Document the condition of the box and then carefully open the box. Accessories and parts included or not included should also be verified and documented. If the TV was received without a stand, set up the protected wooden stand on the conveyor belt. For TVs larger than 40 inches, two people are required to lift and transport the unit to the conveyor belt to prevent damage and injury. In some cases, if the wooden stand is unavailable, foam inserts can be used to protect the TV screen when laying it down. Regardless, all TVs should be placed on a protected surface while on the conveyor belt and the RMA information included with the unit. Gently place the TV on a protective surface on the conveyor belt and put the RMA information with the unit. For recycling purposes, packing material is taken to the recycling area. Here, foam inserts are loaded into a machine that breaks down the material. The broken down material is then shipped to be recycled. Once the unit is placed on the conveyor belt, the serial number is checked and other information including the carrier and tracking number is inputted into the computer. The unit should then be plugged in to check for defects. If the product appears to be seriously damaged, take a picture and then report it to a manager on duty. Units with panel damage or older units are then transported to the scrap area. If the TV's information cannot be validated in the system, the TV should be separated and repackaged as wrong receiving. A wrong receiving label is printed and then attached to the package TV. From there, the unit is transported and stored in the wrong receiving area. TVs which appear repairable or with no defects found are sent to the inspection area. Once a TV has been received and checked in, a round of inspections will be performed to determine if the TV is repairable or if there is no defect. First, connect the power cord and power on the TV. Troubleshoot any picture issues using the TV's internal test patterns. Also, check the TV for cosmetic damage and the stability of the stand. Once the defect is confirmed, input the symptom data into the computer. Also, verify the claim number, employee number, grade, and parts needed. Print out the parts needed sheet and attach it to the TV. Finally, disconnect the power to the TV, and from there, defective TVs are moved to the repair area. TVs received with no defect found are also inspected and pattern tests are performed. Those units should also be thoroughly checked for cosmetic damage while also testing for full functionality of all buttons. Once the no defect is confirmed, input all data into the computer. Then, print out the inspection information and attach it to the TV. From there, NDF TVs are sent to the aging area to confirm accuracy of the first inspection. The aging area is equipped with special power lines. These lines can handle a large amount of energy consumption which is necessary for the two-hour aging process. During this time, the units are set to perform several screen tests. 
In some cases, certain TVs require high temperature aging. After one hour of aging, these TVs are then covered with PE or a plastic bag and set to age for an additional hour. Once the aging process is complete, again screen tests are performed to confirm the original problem was resolved. Regardless if no defect was found or parts were replaced, all received TVs must be put through the aging process. All TV repairs must be completed on a protected and level working area. This setup will ensure the TV does not make contact with the table and prevents damage. Once a TV is transported to the repair area, the parts needed sheet and symptom stickers are checked and verified. The part sheet is then taken to the parts support area to confirm the parts needed. Order all parts needed for the repair. If the required parts are unavailable, the TV should be transported to the pending parts area. Otherwise, if the parts are available, the parts department will receive the request. Using the inventory system, the part is located and is transported on a protected cart to the repair area. This will prevent damage to the part. Once the part or parts are received, the technician should check and verify it is the correct part. To start repairing the TV, carefully lay the unit down. For safety, Connect the anti-static ground wristband to prevent shock or injury while repairing. Next, disassemble the stand and back cover. Find and disassemble the defective parts. If necessary, separate the defective parts and move them to the recycling division. Assemble the new parts and then the whole parts. Once all parts have been replaced, connect the TV to power and a signal generator. Review the symptom and check the TV's functionality, including all physical buttons. After repairing, make sure that the portion around the serviced part has not been damaged. Check and confirm all screws, components, and wiring have been correctly reinstalled. Finally, replace the back cover and stand. Once the repair is complete, the unit is transported to the aging area. While in the aging area, repair TVs will be set to perform screen tests for at least two hours to ensure the original issue was corrected and does not reappear. Once the aging process is complete, a final inspection and quality control will be performed to check the TV's overall functionality. For testing all connections, a HD signal generator is used to ensure the accuracy and stability of the test signals. All cables are connected including HDMI, component, AV, PC, and antenna. Test and confirm all sources are working properly and the original issue has been resolved. When testing the antenna, auto-program the TV and check for the proper air signal. Again, check and confirm the TV is functioning properly. If the TV is 3D capable, connect a Blu-ray player and activate the 3D function. Test and verify the 3D function is working properly. Additionally, if the TV has network connectivity, use the wireless LAN adapter or the built-in wireless adapter to check for networking capabilities. Also, if necessary, a USB thumb drive containing the latest firmware is used to upgrade the TV. Finally, perform a factory reset and confirm all physical buttons on the TV are working properly. Once all tests are complete, check and confirm the stability of the stand as well as the TV's frame. To complete final inspection, enter all information in the computer. Then, print out and attach all documents to the TV. From there, the TV is transported to the cleaning area. After passing final inspection, the TV is transported to the cleaning area. First confirm the model number and serial number. Begin cleaning the TV with the air pressure gun. This will help remove dust and loose particles from both sides of the TV. Next, use a cleaning solution with a microfiber cloth to thoroughly clean the stand and both sides of the TV. If necessary, use the hand glaze to clean the bezel of the TV. 
When finished, use plastic wrap to cover and protect all sides of the frame. This should also be done for the stand. Then, on the serial number label, stamp the word refurbish. Finally, use the large plastic bag to wrap the TV. Neatly fold and then tape the plastic around the TV. Once the TV is wrapped, attach the label and transport the unit to the packaging area. When the TV is ready for packaging, accessories are packaged according to the model number. Remove the label and within the computer system, verify the TV's appropriate accessories. Prepare the entire accessory kit, including the user manual, stand setup guide, as well as the new refurbished warranty card. Then, package the remote control and all other accessories and place them neatly in a plastic bag. After all accessories are packed, seal the bag. Then, print out and attach the packaging label. Finally, place the accessory pack with the TV and attach the label. From there, transport the TV to the packaging area. Before a TV is packaged in its box, confirm the TV's exact model and size. Also verify the proper accessories have been included. With that information, prepare the proper TV base tray according to the TV size. Depending on the size of the TV, there are several box types. This chart indicates what size boxes should be used according to the TV's dimensions. Once the box size has been determined, a molding wheel machine is used to create the necessary foam packing inserts. This machine should only be operated by authorized persons. Depending on the TV size and type, the appropriate size mold is selected and top and bottom foam inserts are made. After the proper foam inserts have been made, they are placed in the TV base tray. Carefully place the TV and the accessory pack into the tray, making sure there are no gaps. Next, cover the TV and tray with the appropriate box, making sure all edges are covered. Then, print out and attach the refurbished packing label and make sure it is secure on the box. Prepare and pack the final top inserts and expanding foam material to eliminate any gaps and secure the TV within the box. Once all packing material is added, close the box top and secure it with staples on both sides. From there, shipping bands are used to secure the box for transport. Before the pans are completely tightened, little pieces of cardboard are used to protect the box where the straps will lie. With both bands tightened, metal clips are positioned and then clamped to ensure each band is secure. From there, the TV is ready to be shipped. Depending on the size, TVs are arranged and placed on pallets. Units are then scanned into the computer, indicating they are ready to be shipped. After scanning, plastic wrap is used to neatly wrap and secure the TVs together. Finally, the TVs are transported to the docks and loaded into shipping containers. Unlike the original one-year warranty, all reconditioned Samsung TVs come with a limited 90-day warranty. This limited warranty covers defects in materials and workmanship and begins on the original date of purchase.